There is a storm brewing here in Tonopah, Nevada. It's going to rain. It's going to rain very fierce. And I got to get the heck out of here. But before I leave, right behind me, in 1951, a woman was murdered at what used to be a brothel. We're going to go to the location, talk a little bit about what happened, and we're going to visit her final resting place. Prostitution is legal here in Knight County. It is not legal in Clark County. That's where Las Vegas is. Las Vegas is a little over 200 miles to the south of here. Now, in Tonopah, you can start a brothel if you wanted. However, all of the brothels here are now long gone. There was a county commissioner. He was a religious type, and he banned any brothel from opening up within 600 miles of this highway right here. This is 95. So if you want to come down here and open up a brothel, it's going to have to be off the beaten path. It probably would have to be that building right over there or something like that. That looks about 600 feet away. So back in 1951, this was what you would call the red light district. This was where all of the brothels were congregated. That fire station right there, that used to be a brothel called Taxines. And that Elks Lodge, right in the middle of your screen right there, that used to be a brothel there as well. I got a funny story about that place that was told to me off camera. I can't repeat the story because I promised them it was kind of weird. It was kind of unusual. But getting back to the main focus of this video. So this right here used to be the Nugget Bar. And the Nugget Bar had a woman, a lady of the night, a sex worker, a prostitute, whichever word you want to use nowadays. Her name was Alice Nashland. And she worked here at the Nugget Bar. And on December 18th, 1951, around 10.30 p.m., she was working at the bar. And by all intents and purposes, she was drinking and having a good time. The operator or the bartender or the house mom, whatever you want to call her, operator of the bar, Inez Parker was here as well. Now, a couple of the guys were coming and going through this establishment right here. Uh, most of the customers in the red light district were guys that were coming from out of state. They would come here, work in the mines for a month, maybe two, and then they would just go on their merry way. And behind the Nugget Bar, right where it used to be where I'm standing, there was, I guess you would call them either cottages or cabins, uh, all right there. Everything is no longer here. And on that night, one of the people that was staying in the cottage behind the bar comes into the bar and sees Inez and Alice on the ground, just beat to hell, blood all over their faces. They immediately phoned for paramedics or whoever they had had at the time, doctors or whatever, they come out here and they take both women to the hospital here in Tonopah. Alice would die of her injuries about two days after that. Uh, Inez, she survived. Uh, she was in a coma for a few days and then they were able to question her about a couple weeks later after the attack. Alice's wounds were so bad, there was actually brain matter that was coming out of the front of her forehead. I mean, she was, her skull was crushed. She, she was just beaten, pulverized. Whoever beat these women uh, had every intention on killing them. Now, this story gets a little bit murky because there's not a whole lot of information about this case and let's face it at that time Tonopah really didn't want the red light district here in town you had a lot of religious people uh, they felt that these were houses of ill repute and maybe the police weren't working as hard on this case as they should be because I mean you know these ladies are running a brothel they're prostitutes I mean who cares right so when they were talking to Inez, they asked her if she knew who did this. And she said, well, again, this story's murky. Uh, she claimed that a man by the name of Raymond Milan was here and 
he attacked them. She's maybe. Mm, she thinks. She's not sure. Well, because she probably blacked out and she probably doesn't even really remember the attack. So, Raymond Milan, by all intents and purposes, did not have a criminal record. Uh, he was a minor. He had came to town to work. And he had a pretty good reputation in town. Uh, a uh, God-fearing Christian man. And he had a very calming demeanor. So, people were pretty surprised to hear that this guy, just a very... An overly friendly guy, but overly friendly in a good way, would have any kind of uh, doings or responsibility for this uh, these two vicious attacks that occurred behind me. So immediately they grabbed him and they charged him with the battery and assault of Inez, and they charged him with the murder of Alice. And this uh, story was big news here at the time here in Tonopah. So the trial takes place here and listen, you have a couple of women, one of them a known prostitute who's known to drink way too much and more than likely the police know her very well and they've had multiple encounters with her. And then you got Raymond Milan who is a nice guy. It's, it's really all I can say. There's not a whole lot of information like I said about him. So he was stuck in the Nye County Jail for about, say about four, four and a half months. And then when the trial concluded, the jury deliberated for about maybe 45 minutes and uh, they came back with a verdict. That verdict was not guilty. And everybody clapped and it looked like the whole court was in, uh, they, were, they were in agreement that this man who was so nice couldn't have possibly committed this crime. And as soon as the not guilty verdict was reached, he was released from jail. And, you know, there was a couple people that the police might have suspected that was responsible for this crime. The guy that was telling me the story about, that I really said I wouldn't tell about this place over here. Uh, he said that history wants to believe that the owner of Taxines, the boyfriend, came here and tried to kill these two women for some unknown reason. I mean, you had several brothels here that were all in competition for each other. Now, I don't know if they're getting along. I don't know if they're like, yeah, you can't open here. I mean, I don't know if the, another brothel across the street was allowed to open. Was it a jealous rivalry? I mean, the weapon that was more than likely used uh, was a bar stool. And, you know, I'll tell you how backwards Tonopah was at that time. They didn't even take any fingerprints. <laughs> uh, the, the police were asked, well, why didn't you take any fingerprints? And they said, well, we don't have to... <laughs> We, we don't have what it, what it takes to... They don't, we don't have the, the, the instruments to take fingerprints. So no fingerprints were taken. So basically, the only, uh, the only proof that this guy, Raymond Milan, had anything to do with Alice's murder was just because Inez, who really didn't re really remember the attack, remembers him being there that night. But there were several other men there at that night too, so... There really just was absolutely no proof that Raymond committed that crime. This is Taxine's grave. Uh, she's the one that owned the other brothel that is now the volunteer fire department here in town. Her boyfriend, some would say, could have had something to do with it. Who knows? And uh, not too far from her, Maybe about seven graves away. This is Alice Jean Nashland. Unsolved homicide.
All right, guys, I'm hitting the road. Who knows? Who knows at the end of the day what happened? I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.